Hello again, welcome back to part two of the watercolor sketch tutorial. At the end of part one we were adding this shadow behind the barn and that's where we're going to pick up. Added a little bit of a cast shadow on the grass and I did that with a blue and the green. So it's a blue green shadow and I'm keeping the same color to add a little bit of shadow to the back of the barn, a little bit of core shadow there. Drop a little bit more of that shadow underneath the roof and on the part of the roof that kind of hangs out on the back side as well. I'm going to keep the same color on my brush and I'm going to put down kind of a base color for the trees that are going to be around the barn. And again that's a blue green. A light application at first. And I'm going to keep it the same color and use the, the sharp edge of my flat brush to put some texture in the roof of the barn. Just some, some lines that go up and down giving it the indication of it might be a little bit of a tin roof maybe. All right, now I've mixed up a little bit of blue and green again, and I'm going to go back up into the tree, um, and I'm going to just put some indication of some leaves up there. And I'm just kind of making random marks. I'll bring some of that color down into the trees around the barn as well. And this is more of a green than it is a blue-green, but it, it does have blue in there as well. Um, it's important when you're using any color like green or really any color at all that you mix that color um, unless it's a primary color so um, you know when you look at it, trees um, and grass and plants they're not just the green that's in the tube of the paint they're they're a mixture of colors you'll see yellows and blues in there so I like to use yellows uh, for the tree anyway I like to use yellows for the areas that are highlighted and I like to use blues for the areas that are shadowed so yellows for the highlights blues for the shadows and now I'm just going in and, and putting some of those leaves, a little bit of an indication of that. We're going to layer up that area. So might let that area dry a little bit before we go back in there. But again, because this is a sketch, we're going to kind of go quickly with this. And um, now I'm putting some of those blues in. And that's going to give you a nice indication of the trees. And we're going to continue adding those colors all the way across. Might take some of those blues a little bit and put them back down underneath where those trees are to give a little bit of a shadow to that as well, the right side of the barn. And I'm going to go back and really load up my brush with some heavy, heavy blue green and put a little bit of plant life around the barn, make it look like it's a little bit of an older barn that's been there for a while. And on the video, it looks really dark. It's not quite that that dark um, in person, but it it is darker than the other colors that we've put on thus far. And when you're working with watercolor paint, it's kind of a uh, process of starting light and and slowly building up dark, by layering your colors. And now I'm gonna put some indication of some trees off in the distance, again to create that illusion of space. And I'm gonna you'll notice I'm kind of working around the surface of my paper. That's because I'm trying to encourage some areas to dry a little bit before I go back over them. Um, I do want to have some control of the colors as I add them on there. I don't want the water um, in the paint to just take control over um, of where my colors are going to go. And and this is going to provide me a little bit more control by working in different areas of the surface. It also creates a, a sense of harmony and unity in the piece when you use different. Um, different areas. You use the same color in different areas of the piece, so that also encourages that. Might go back over, make my shadow a little bit darker, make my light source a little bit more intense on the tree. Um, still working with uh, a darker blue in this case. Now I've mixed up a little bit more of that 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 blue green um, with a little bit more yellow in it, so it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to go back over the mid tones of my tree and just collectively trying to build up that illusion of a, a grouping of leaves over here on the right side of the tree in the foreground. 
it's always going to be harder to put a lighter color, a color that's lighter in value, on top of a color that's darker. So it's it's better to kind of work with your lighter values and you can slowly get darker. I'm going to let some of those leaves come down and not even put an indication of a branch there or let the viewer's mind do that. Just like that. Now I'm going to go back into that yellow green. It's had plenty of time to dry, and I'm going to make that color a little bit more intense, a little bit more solid. And I'm also going to create a little bit of texture in this field outside of the the barn by not painting the whole thing, letting some of that lighter value come through there, and that's going to create a little bit of a texture appearance. It's going to make the image more interesting and, and fun to look at. I'm going to go back into that barn and make that red a little bit more intense as well. And I'm going to have to go back on the back side of the barn as well to make that value a little bit darker so that the side that faces the light source is still still bright. We don't want the back side of the, the barn to be a little bit lighter in value. I might take some of that paint off a little bit to make it a little bit lighter. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow to the trees that are right beside my barn as well. Give them a little bit of indication of, of form. And at this point in time, we're just about done with our watercolor sketch. I hope you have enjoyed this video tutorial by the virtualinstructor.com.